and kings yes we do but hello welcome to a new vlog okay you guys so in yesterday's video a subscriber sent me this beautiful uh rose quartz tree so feline helped me and untangled her because obviously she comes a little tangled which is okay but i wanted to i'm gonna move this wax melt because we don't really use it and that's gonna be her little home for now. Look how cute. So thank you to the person who sent that. Y'all, I promise I'm not that much of a messy eater. <sighs> My poor dress. So I'm watching the new episode of Grey's Anatomy, just, you know, eating my lunch. Next thing you know, I look down and my shirt said, you know what, I was hungry. Now I have to change my dress. Does that happen to anyone else? Like, your boobs get hungry, your clothing gets hungry. It's like, girl, if I wanted to share, I would share, okay? Oh, I think I'm gonna wear this in right here. It's been a minute. In my opinion, this dress, it's a little iconic. Does anyone wanna buy it for a thousand dollars? I'm about to put it on. I think she's such a cute dress. She's just a little triggering little trauma-based. My breathing is really bad today. Anyways, I'm gonna go keep watching Grey's Anatomy. I'm actually watching it on my laptop, which I have with me. I bring my laptop everywhere because <laughs> I always have my headphones in. Oh, I am a mess. Hello, welcome to the next day. So you guys are staring at my ceiling. <laughs> I'm gonna explain why. Um, so, I'm allergic to cats and I have two cats and normally we are all able to function together as a family. I'm normally okay. I'm normally fine. Um, the cats do sleep in my bedroom with me, but I have my bedroom door open all night so they're free to do what they want. So normally Wasabi will sleep on the foot of the bed, so will Rari or they'll sleep like on the floor next to the bed. But Wasabi slept on my chest the whole night. And I want to show you what happened <laughs> because of that. My eye looks like this. So massive allergic reaction. I'm hoping in a couple hours it'll lessen up. This has happened multiple times before. I'm not coming for him. I love him so much. And I think he just needed a mint for some mint lemon water. By the way, my eye is already like drastically better. It still looks kind of rough, but <laughs> some raspberries and the smallest cucumbers I have ever seen in my actual life. They're so cute. So I got some rice cakes. This is probably like the healthiest version of a chip you can find. <laughs> it's literally just rice cakes. Um, it has five grams of whole grains, very, very um, low calorie. I got caramel. I actually got two caramels because I have a massive sweet tooth. And then for like lunches or a snack, I got these already like pre-bagged servings because I don't trust myself to have like a massive bag and then take out a serving. So if I don't trust myself somewhere or if it's like a trigger, then I need to work around it, figure out substitutes. So I used to use this flat out bread all the time, but I never had this one. This is a plant-based protein one. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna give that a go. For one of these is only 90 calories and 10 proteins. So that's pretty great. So Feline really likes these uh, cauliflower crust pepperoni pizza life cuisine thingies. 
So I got three of them. Oh, my hair. <laughs> I do want to try one. So I'm interested because she says they're like really good. So I'm excited to try it. So I got some Atkins, which is good if you're doing like low carb, whatever it may be. Um, these remind me of M&M's, but they're not. There's literally only one net carb and 130 calories. Love that. Blaine needed some more coffee. So she just got some breakfast blend and this one looks scary. Death Wish Coffee, the world's strongest coffee. Okay, she won't be sleeping for days. I got this, uh, it's by the brand Kind. Uts and Honey Granola with Toasted Coconut. It's a good source of fiber, because I need to up my fiber. Um, so I figured throw this on some yogurt, I don't know. Speaking of yogurt, we had to get some. So I got the Shobani Zero Sugar Strawberry Cheesecake. They have a zero sugar kind, so I figured I'd try it. I also got the Chobani, it's just regular vanilla Greek yogurt. Not my fave, but if I add some fruit and some granola, I think we'll be good. I got two of these uh, Chobani coconut Greek yogurt. Here's the other one. And we got two of the Chobani honey and cream, which Feline picked out. She'll take one of my coconut and I'll take one of her honey and cream. <laughs> I want to start drinking just the littlest bit of coffee in the morning because I notice it really does help with my appetite. It gives me a little bit of energy. So I just got some that's already made. <laughs> the blind, blind, no, blonde roast. Feline said that it just has a less like strong potent coffee taste because I don't like coffee very much. Um, I got some garlic and herb, cream cheese. Celine got some overnight oats that she wants to try uh, and the brand Mush. Ugh. I know. Not Ugh. Bush. bush. <laughs> One more time. Take two. <laughs> mush oats. Ew. She got apple, cinnamon, and blueberry. So these do go in the fridge, by the way, because they're cold. Got some broccoli. We are always <laughs> getting broccoli. What's well, funny? <laughs> What? We got some broccoli. We're broccoli obsessed around these parts. You can't go wrong with broccoli. Can't go wrong. Some barbecue sauce. Got some ground turkey. We already have a pretty good amount of meat, so we didn't get too much. Turkey bacon and just some uh, chicken tenderloins. So I got some lunch meat. This is my favorite. It's just the rotisserie seasoned chicken breast. Got some cayenne pepper. We needed it. I love me a cottage cheese moment, so I got some cottage cheese. So Feline's creamer, she's gonna be using oat milk creamer, sweet cream flavored, but I am gonna be using the zero sugar caramel macchiato moment, which looks like this. Got some uh, fresh mozzarella pearls, just a container of those, and then some ketchup. Okay, you guys, so I normally don't film at this time, late at night, like after my shower or anything. Um, this is usually when I upload my video and I schedule it. But I realized in this video, I do not have an outro. I don't have a PO box. I don't have a voice memo. So I do wanna talk a little bit about the voice memo segment in my video and then PO box. I am going to keep them because a lot of people enjoy them. I enjoy them, I love them. But obviously there's a portion of people who think that so let's look okay so i see a letter and a bag of stuff i'm going to read the letter first so this was super sweet and from daphne who actually has a organization that, that she does at vipsfun.org where the p stands for primates it's a nonprofit where they help save lemurs and gorillas and stuff like that. So obviously I'm not going to share the private stuff that she said in there. But if you guys want to go there and help out in any way that you can, please do. Daphne, your letter was super sweet and I'm so excited to see what is in here. So this is a bag that says VIPs fund and inside... We have a little seal. Oh my God, this is adorable. And you know what? I always call Twinkie my little seal because I feel like she looks like one. This is so cute. And then there's this cute little thing. It honestly looks like a little mushroom. Like that is adorable. So if you go to that website, 
every single thing that you buy on there, 100% of the purchase is donated to wildlife conservation. That is amazing. And thank you so much, Daphne. So I figured I would do one more, which I did rip it open, but I didn't really see what it was. I did see a wheel. Okay. A wheel. Mobility Direct. Okay. So someone thinks I need a little scooter. Fat phobia at its finest. After such a sweet thing, you know, it makes the world go round. A little bit of bad, a little bit of good. Yikes on bikes. Okay, so the next thing, we're going to do a voice memo because I like being interviewed by you. Hi, Queen. I love you. And I wanted to ask, are you a jealous person? And how do you deal with jealousy in relationships? Thank you so much for the question. Um, so jealousy in relationships, yes, I am a jealous person and I think it's because I am not a confident person. A lot of people seem to think that I am confident, but I actually does it. So it's not because I like chose that. It's just because that's how he does it, which is totally fine. I personally love this therapist. Um, so this appointment, actually, we talked a lot about, do I have binge eating? What's really my food problems? And what can we do to help with that? So I don't, I do not binge. Um, therapist said so, I say so. I have had issues and I was very vocalized with this, about this, very honest about this. In 2019, I had binging problems. I don't eat that way anymore. I don't have that same mind frame around food anymore. Um, but I think this topic is just safer off of my channel because I know a lot of people have different thoughts about it and it's just safer if I don't talk about it. But I am not a binge eater. Um, I do not have binge eating disorder. And obviously it's taken some time to realize that because with someone my size, I mean, I, I overeat, obviously. I mean, you don't become this size by just like kind of overeating, you know, <laughs> it's not how it works. Anyways, so we talked um, about like why am I this size? What is my issues with food? How do I have a better relationship with food? And it's, 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 I, I turn to food for comfort. It's that simple. Um, if I'm feeling any sort of negative emotion, I want to eat because while I'm eating, I do not feel those negative emotions at all. So I love this therapist because something I've never had before was, um, someone explaining to me like the most popular emotions, popular that's for the lack of a better uh, term. The most used emotions that humans feel um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And where do we feel them in our body? Like, where's our physical symptoms of them? What is our emotional symptoms of them, et cetera, et cetera. So they want me to journal, which I love doing, journal down, jot down times where right before a moment where I want to turn to food for comfort, exactly what am I feeling? What are the emotions? Where do I feel them in my body? Uh, how do I feel them mentally? Um, what is the scenario? Why am I also feeling these ways? And I think it's going to help me a lot. Um, this was a very educational um, therapy session and I absolutely loved it. Like I was dreading therapy at first and I was even super honest with him. I was like, I was dreading therapy and everything about it. But now that I've been to only two sessions, I, I think I'm looking forward to the third because before this session, I, you guys did not see this, but I had massive anxiety. It wasn't about therapy as a whole, partially, but it was just about everything. Everything felt scary. Um, I have been suffering so bad and I, I need to go back on medicine. That is why I scheduled um, a psychiatrist appointment because I, the medicine I was taking, it just wasn't working anymore. So um, I was told to stop taking it. So I did stop taking it. And now my anxiety is, it's just, it's, it's not good, obviously. So I am going to be put back on medicine. I am going to feel so relieved when that happens. Uh, but my appointment's not for another like two weeks. The soonest I could be seen, which is fine. So until then, I'm really going to take advantage of these next few um, therapy sessions just to understand my emotions more and why do I feel the need to turn to food to comfort those emotions. And I don't know, I, I feel really good. And we want to talk more about like PTSD 
um, because of the things that I've been through in the past, like my childhood. I have been told by almost every single therapist I've had that I show a lot of signs of PTSD. And that's a topic that never, uh, never is easy. I, I don't even like talking about it now. It gives me like a lot of like, and the ink, like this is so cool. And then these socks, we have avocado, we have peach, we have watermelon, we have banana, we have lemon and strawberry, so cute. And then look at these bookmarkers. These are bookmarkers. Like if that ain't cute, I don't know what it is. I've been really wanting one of these thingies because I suffer with excoriation, you guys know. And I really wanna keep my fingers busy and she got me one. <laughs> like, isn't that so sweet? Oh my God, I feel so emotional, God. Then she got me these stress balls. Like, oh my God, I had to open one instantly. Look, look how, ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. Like, look how cute. It's like cute, funny, and silly. Like, you can't be stressed squeezing on one of those, I can tell you that. And then she got me this phone charger where it's like portable. I think that is so cool. So I'm excited to give that a try. Obviously a Lego moment because I'm obsessed with Legos. And it's funny because I almost got her this. <laughs> I was very close, so we both would have got one. And I've been hounding her. I really want a fish. I don't know why. So obviously I can't get a fish. So uh, she got me this like fake fish tank. When I hook it up and stuff, I will definitely show you guys. I'm so excited. I have three cute little fish. Look at that. Last but not least, these gorgeous flowers. They're absolutely stunning. Thank you so much, baby. Of course, baby. I love you. I love you so much. Now I'm gonna set up your stuff. So these are the things I got her. I got her a bonsai tree grow kit. I got her a Lego, cause she does like Legos. I got her into them. She loves the strange planet, like Instagram. So I got her the book. She needed a new perfume, so I got her Guest Seductive. She loves hats, so I got her one of those with a little ghosty. Um, she loves face masks, skincare, etc., etc. So I got her a ton of those. And she does love socks, so I got her some of them. I really tried to think of her and what she loves. So I got her some coconut milk um, scrub and some brown sugar scrub. And last but not least, she loves like the balloon dog, which so do I. It's super cute. So I found that on Amazon. So yeah, I hope she likes everything. Actually, I already know because I'm editing. She loved everything. <laughs> All right, come out here. <laughs> I wish you guys could see her face. You like? You got the strange place. I did. You love me. Of course I love you. What do you think of that? I am so obsessed. <gasps> Baby. So I don't know how that smells. So we gotta try it out. We can find out right now. Ooh, this is aesthetic. You've been needing some new cologne. Tell me if it smells good. Ooh, I'm ready. I just came. <laughs> oh, I can't say that. My bad. That smells bomb. Oh, you did good with this one. Guess seductive. She has to go back to work, so we're kind of in a rush. You love everything, though, baby. Baby, I'm obsessing. Got the new socks. <laughs> I did. You know I love my. So were we on the same page with socks? We were on the same page with socks. I literally have almost bought this hat so many times. Really? So many times. There's so many different colors. You have no idea how hard it was for me to choose a color. No, this is perfect. Good. I don't have any gray. I'm glad you like. You know we were just talking about this, baby. Yes, we were. You a know bonsai I've been grow for a bonsai kit. tree. Yep. I'm going to put this together as soon as I'm done. I'm obsessed. The color scheme, first of all, chef's kisses. I know, the color scheme, like, all goes together, besides the, the book, but, yes. And I didn't even do the color scheme on purpose, it just, like, happened. You're just an aesthetic type of gal. I am. Look at this guy. Because I know you like the blue. Because it is personal, but I will say, it's an amazing cause. And thank you so much, Kiana, for um, opening up to me. 
<gasps> oh my god! This is stunning! This dainty gold heart. This is like right up my alley. Oh my god, this is beautiful. The LM collection. Please, you guys, check out this website. Thank you so much, Kiana. Here we have another package. Ooh, looks like we have a book. <gasps> House of Leaves by Mark. I don't want to pronounce this wrong. Uh, Mark Z. Danielis. <laughs> Let me do this right. Danielis. Uh, no. <laughs> I've actually read this. Yes, I have. So whoever sent this to me, which um, I didn't get a note or anything, I'm going to pass this on to someone else, someone who loves reading and who will enjoy it as much as I did. But thank you to the person who sent this to me. So if you guys wanna send me anything, here is my PO box. I appreciate everything. You guys are honestly amazing. Okay, next is voice memos where I am being interviewed by you. Okay, so let's see who are the lucky interviewers today. Hey, Amber. So we're going to ask another question. It's Margaret again. Hi, it's Sarah again, Amber. <laughs> and we wanted to know... We were just wondering, um, what is your favorite movie of all time? Okay, love you. Bye. Hi, you guys. My favorite movie of all time... Um, I used to say Forrest Gump. That used to be a big one for me, but I'm going to go with a simple favor. Hello, Amber. Did you go to Comic-Con this year? Love you. No, I did not. But thank you so much for the question. I think the question everybody wants to know is what happened to the bench monster? Yikes on bakes. Hi, I'm Berlin. I was just wondering if you have like a weird habit or quirk that you can only act out when you're by yourself not even in front of Celine or your family or anybody that you can only do when you're by yourself because I know I have my quirks so yeah I was just wondering that love you bye bye oh I love you thank you for the question oh my gosh it's so hard because majority of like my weird little habits and my quirks um Fleen sees them and I present them in front of her. Um, oh gosh, let me think. I legit cannot think of anything. Um, cause it's like, you ask me like something I do by myself, like not in front of Fleen. And I'm pretty like myself in front of her. So I don't even have an answer. Oh my God, I feel like that's such a bad answer. I'm sorry. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I still feel bad that I can't think of a quirky thing that I do when I'm alone. You know, I, I feel like I wanna ask Feline to answer uh, one day, like some of the weird things that I do or like the weird habits that I do or like quirky things that I do that she has seen me do because it's like, I've always another maxi dress and I didn't get it in the ship shipment yesterday, but I think we got her folks. This came today. Yes, we did. And it's the same brand that I'm wearing now. So, I do not know how to pronounce this, but there is the brand for you guys. I just got a polka dotted one. They're super comfy. And then I also got two uh, controllers for the Switch because the other one that we have broke. And... I realized, you know what? I want one too. <laughs> Cause I just used the controller that came with the switch. So I just got two of these, which I highly recommend. Um, it broke because it fell by the way, but these look so cool once they're lit up. Like you can literally change the color of your switch controller, blue, red, pink, purple, or it can be rainbow, but this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I'll show you guys when it's turned on. So I forgot to show you guys, but I don't know if you remember this gift I got from Pink Sparkles. Me and Twinkie. It's a wooden heart. This is where I have it. Uh, in the living room. Isn't it so cute? I kind of want to figure out where she got that and get more. So we are about to play uh, Mario. And I wanted to show you the controllers lit up. 
So you press this button right here and it changes. See, look at that. So every single day I could be using a green one, I could use a yellow the next day, blue the next day, orange. It's actually really freaking cool. Yep, I'm gonna be doing pink, but you can also do rainbow, so. Yeah, we're about to play Mario Kart. I'm gonna whoop her butt. You wish. <laughs> All right, so it is now nighttime and I just wanted to show you guys what these look like in the dark. Feline always has hers on um, rainbow, but I decided pink and purple are my two faves for this. I wouldn't expect purple. It's just so pretty on here. The pink looks really good. Yeah, let me show them the purple. Let me get there. That's the purple. Look how pretty. I don't know. I'm just like low-key obsessed. Hello. So today has been a busy day. I had an appointment, some errands to run, and then we had to come get Twinkie because she had an event appointment and that went really well. It was just like her checkup to get shots. You guys know how that goes. Um, she's in her target goal weight. So I'm so proud of her, the little baby. Oh, I also had a dietitian appointment. So normally my dietitian appointments are gonna be like once a month, check-ins, but this one was more so because I needed a little bit more guidance and instruction, like um, goals and yeah. So, I wanted to share with you guys the goals that my dietitian gave me and I'm not gonna lie they kind of shocked me um, because we're all so used to like all these stories especially like on tv like doctor now like they they only get to eat like 1200 calories it's crazy so you know that's what a lot of people assume the the journey to weight loss surgery is like but it's it's not like that at all like at all in any sort of way. So I do want to share the goals. So first things first is these are just like goals to aim for. Um, 30 grams of fiber, which I've never really tracked my fiber before. So I have no idea how much fiber I'm currently eating. 85 grams of fat. That seems like a lot, but I also don't know how much I'm eating. I do know like in the past when I try to like restrict a lot when I'm eating like 1500 trash out because I am following what they want me to do and that is how it's going to be. I, I don't have to understand it per se because obviously when you, you know, you think about weight loss surgery and the journey to getting there and all that, like you think of small dainty portions. <laughs> I know a lot of you think that way too because that's what I've seen. Um, I show some of my meals and you guys think it's like a massive meal. Like I recently showed an omelet that was just two eggs and people thought it was more than that. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Um, people were like, that omelet's too big. I'm like, it's two eggs and some jalapenos. Like, let's calm down. But knowing that I can have more than that for breakfast, it's kind of freeing, but it also puts me in like a weird headspace of like how I used to be. Um, feeling like, Oh, now I have the option to like eat a lot because I, I did feel in the last few weeks, especially um, that I wasn't doing something right. And I think that's why I requested a more of a, a guidance to uh, what I should be eating and how much because I feel a little gaslit and I don't want to like. I hate when I express how I feel. People think I'm like lecturing or preaching. It's just a lot of people, every time I show something I'm eating or like what I'm doing, people are like, you're doing it wrong. I'm not though. <laughs> and that just becomes frustrating because I follow the instructions that are given to me and I'm doing, you know, what they tell me to do. And then like hundreds of people tell me I'm doing something wrong. It's just, it's just hard. It's hard to share your journey because everyone thinks that they have the right answer and the right answer is my weight loss clinic. So I need to just keep listening to them and um, believe in them because I know what they're telling me is the right thing and I have to um, ignore the fear, ignore what I used to think about weight loss and all that and just do what they tell me to do. So there is an app that my dietitian wants me to use to like calculate all of this. Um, it's an app that she says that a lot of weight loss patients use or weight loss surgery patients, especially after surgery. 
So she wants me to use it now beforehand. So I'm gonna do that, set my goals in there. I just really wanted to give that update because you know, it was important to me that you guys know majority of this journey and the things that I need to do. Um, it, it holds me accountable. Um, there are other people out there who want to also get weight loss surgery. And I just feel like there's too much of the wrong thing out there. The, and not enough of like, this is the real journey. <laughs> the real journey of someone who's trying to get it. Like this isn't for a TV show. I ain't going to Mexico. Um, this is just the long, real journey. And it's not as crazy restrictive right now. Okay, you guys, my desk is currently going down. So if that's what you hear, that's what you hear. Um, let's do a P.O. Box moment. P.O. Box time. Okay, so the first thing is this bag. Is there a letter? Yes, there is. So this is from Hannah. Home collection. Okay, so let's open what's in here. I already know based on her letter, but we're gonna um, surprise you guys. I'm actually so excited to see what this looks like. Aww. You know what is so crazy? My mom for Christmas got Feline something that is like almost identical to this, but in a different color. Great minds think alike. So this is a rose quartz tree. I think this is so beautiful and I honestly love rose quartz. So in here, the little pamphlet, it says that rose quartz is a stone of the heart, a crystal of unconditional love, tenderness, and healing. Aww. I love this. So I am going to maneuver the rose quartz tree and I'm going to set her up somewhere special. I'm going to find her a little home and then I will show you guys in my next video because we're going to find her a cute home and get her all situated. So thank you so much, Hannah. So next we have this little bag, a little bullet journal. Oh, right. I love a bullet journal and no letter. So I don't know who to thank. I am like rooting for you. Love you. You're a queen. We couldn't be any more different, but <laughs> I just, I just love your videos. People who say you're not entertaining. I have a message for y'all. Why are you watching her videos? She's hella entertaining. Oh. Okay, love you. My 30 seconds is almost up. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I love that, like, you're so supportive, even though we are so different. I feel like opposites attract, for sure, um, even in friendship ways. And, like, especially, like, when it comes to, like, watching someone on YouTube. I love watching people who are, like, nothing like me. So I totally get it. And thank you for calling me entertaining because people have been so mean lately. And I know my content is like drastically different than it used to be, um, obviously. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a future video. But um, I'm just going to leave it with thank you so much. Like, honestly, you made my day. So thank you. Hi, Amberlynn. This is my question for you. I'm a longtime viewer, and I was wondering what you think you could do to amend the relationship with your audience. Um, I'm a general supporter of you. I do have some critiques, but I feel like you always focus on the negativity. And I know you say that you're allowed to respond to negativity, which you totally are. But I feel like your supporters are never addressed as much as your haters. And sometimes that makes me feel like you're not connected with us. And like, why should we support you if you don't focus on us? Thanks. Bye. Wait, that genuinely made me so sad because I, oh, the emotions are coming, the emotions. Um, I don't ever want people to think that, like, I don't appreciate their support because that's definitely not the case at all. I just noticed that through the years, the hate gets louder, the harassment gets more extreme. And with someone who already, like, truly dislikes themselves and has a lot of mental health problems and trauma and things that they need to work on it is a lot easier for the hate and the harassment and like the stalking and the bullying to 
affects them more. And I feel like I have to stand up for myself because so many people think that I am lying about this or that or um, whatever it may be. And people are just believing the lies and they're believing the rumors and they're believing all these things about me that aren't true. And I do feel an obligation to defend my name because for so long um, people thought I was someone that I'm not and it's just like continuing and the only reason is because I never stood up for myself and it's like standing up for myself does make it seem like I'm ignoring the supporters and I'm trying so hard not to and that is why I'm trying to find different ways of communicating with you guys and all of this stuff and that is one of the biggest reasons why I do segments like question of the day or segments with you know the voice memos being interviewed by you is I want to build a connection that is why I love you guys sending me letters and messaging me on Instagram and all of this stuff like I'm trying to build a connection with my audience and the people who do support me and it is hard when there's so many people fighting against you and I'm I'm trying to find, sorry, it is emotional for me. Um, I'm trying to find a balance. Sorry, I was fixing my bra. <laughs> um, I'm trying really hard. And it's just, people weren't, you know, made to be critiqued by thousands. And I understand that this is like a choice that I made being a YouTuber. But it's hard. It's very hard. <laughs> and it's like, you only understand unless you've been in that situation and it's just hard for thousands of people to be so against me and so rude and I don't know. I, I'm trying to do my best, but just know that more than anything, I appreciate my supporters and the people who like see past all the BS and they're able to see my heart. One of the biggest reasons why I stay around. Okay, if I kept talking, I was gonna, I was about to ball my eyes out. Let's do one more. Hi, Queen. I love you so much. I've been watching you since 2018, probably. And I've honestly seen a lot of growth from you. So I just want to ask, how do you feel about <laughs> Like, what is happening? Um, okay, wow. I just, I've always dreamt of being a mom. And uh, I kind of got that stolen from me when I got cancer so that was hard and um it's like there's so many criteria you have to make to adopt which I understand but I also don't at the same time because like I feel like it's too strict to adopt but too lenient to foster and there's like a lot of foster homes out there that are not good they're abusive and every sort of way you can think of um been there done that I was in foster care from 8 to 18 so I I know how that goes obviously right now I I would not adopt because of my weight I I would not be able to peacefully take care of a child and I know that and that's one of the biggest reasons why I want weight loss surgery is because of my future. I, I I want that life where I'm a mom because I really, really want to like give a child what I didn't have, but I know that I, I have, like I have so much love to give and I know that I would be a good mom. Like I might not be good to myself, but I would be good to my child and I would take care of them and I would love them dearly and wholeheartedly wow what is happening <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i have been so emotional ever since that first therapy appointment and a lot of people were asking like why were you so emotional during it like what do you mean you cried already in your first appointment like it was just your first appointment no we talked about some stuff let me tell you because i just wanted it a lot of it all out in the open ready to rumble <laughs> i feel like i'm really rambly i don't know what's happening right now don't mind me i'm going through a moment <laughs> i'm 
going through a moment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry this got so heavy and it got so rambly and I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. Um, I don't mean to be so long-winded. I don't really want my being interviewed by you moments to be long-winded because I want to be able to like put a spotlight on several questions in one video. But um, yikes on the eggs. I know Alexa Shook says that. I think I got that from him. I don't know. But like I said it one time like a week ago and now I can't stop saying it. So love that for me. Okay, I'm just going to end this video with a big fat thank you um, to anyone who actually watched through this whole video. So yes, they do know. Second question is, will you continue therapy after the 12 required sessions? Yes, 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 yes. Big fat yes. So I feel like therapy before the surgery is just like the beginning stages. You know, I'm just like tipping my toes in the lake. You know what I'm saying? But then after surgery is when the real deal, like I'm not saying the therapy now isn't the real deal. You know what I mean? Um, things are going to be hard after surgery. I can't rely on food for comfort anymore. So it's like, I'm going to need therapy. I'm going to need to talk about my feelings and what I'm going through. Instead of turning to food or wanting to turn to food, I'm going to be like, yes, I have that ther therapy appointment this week. You know, I can't wait to talk to my therapist, blah, 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 blah. So yes, that's very, very important to me that I continue therapy uh, before and after weight loss surgery. So the last question, when did you first start turning to food for comfort? This started at a very, very, very young age. Um, I have always been bigger than I was supposed to be, even as a toddler. I wasn't like massive, as a toddler, I was a little cutie, okay? So here are some photos if you wanna see. Um, but I was, you know, a little chunky. I wasn't skinny by no means, but you know, I had a few extra pounds. <laughs> I had a few extra pounds going on. And I just remember so well, like, especially when I was like seven, people just telling me, oh, this is just baby weight. She's gonna be fine. You know, it's, it's something that stuck with me for a while. And then once I hit puberty, it was like, oh, don't worry, you know, once you hit puberty and now that you have, things are going to start evening out and you're going to lose weight and all this stuff. Nope, never happened. So I grew up with a hard childhood. I mean, it's obvious I was put into foster care. You know, you don't get put into foster care for nothing. I don't have trauma for nothing. <laughs> like I, I went through a lot. Things that I don't talk about, probably won't talk about on here. And I just always felt myself eating more than I should have, eating when it wasn't time to eat, eating when no one else was eating. Um, I was eating adult portions at like a young age, you know, eight, nine years old. And I never really understood why I was doing those things until I got a little bit older. You know, the first time that I ever processed like there's an issue here. I couldn't like process too hard because as a 10 year old, like what are you really gonna process, you know? It was when I did Girl Scouts and I ate a whole box of cookies in my closet. I was in an all girls group home at the time and I was supposed to get why I was doing it. I missed my parents a lot. Um, I remember I hadn't seen them in a while. Um, I didn't know where my brother was and because we were separated at that point because I went to the group home and I felt scared. I was terrified and I felt like no one understood. I was lonely. And that's the only thing I knew to do to like numb that, that feeling, those feelings and those thoughts was to eat. So teaching myself to do that at such a young age, um, no matter what I did, I couldn't unlearn it, but now is my chance. That's why I'm taking advantage of therapy and I'm just so excited for it. I'm so freaking excited. You guys have no idea. Okay, so now that we are done with the three questions, um, I do want to get into my weight. So there has been a lot of conspiracy that I am 600 pounds. This has been going on for over six years on my channel now. Um, always thinking I'm over 600 pounds. I have never been over 600 pounds, still not 600 pounds. So there was a new scale that I bought that I started using. You guys actually saw that. 
And when I first got it, it was only like two to three pounds different from the scale that I was using before. It actually made me two to three pounds heavier and I was totally fine with that. I was like, it's cool. Then there was like two weeks where I did not weigh myself at all. And I stepped on the scale and it said I was down like 30 pounds. I was like, I'm doing the damn thing. Um, it was inaccurate. <laughs> it was inaccurate. Unfortunately, that scale, it weighs feline right on point. Right on point with our other scale too. So the whole time I thought I was a certain weight, but I wasn't. So I went to my trusty scale that I stopped using because of my ankle, but my ankle is completely healed, doesn't hurt ever. Um, it's totally fine. It's just the scale 